Ciao guys and welcome back, it's your friend Luca and in today's video I'm gonna try to help you understand which kit lens you should get for your Lumix S camera. Should you get the 2260 or the 24105 f4? It's not an easy choice. Out from the box we can easily see that the 24105 is double the size of the 2260 but it also weighs pretty much double the amount. The 24105 has a 77mm filter thread while the 2260 has a 67 mm filter thread. So it depends what type of filters you have, you're gonna save more money with the 2260, also considering the filtration you're gonna use with this lens. While with the 24105, you will have to spend more money with your filters. The 24105 is offering a lock and unlock switch, a out of focus manual focus switch, and on off for the stabilization of the lens while the 2260 is only having an autofocus uh, manual focus switch. Both lenses are offering macro capability, for example the 24105 can focus as close as uh, 30 cm through the wall range, so even 105mm and is offering a pretty good macro capability, while the 2260 can focus as close as 15 cm if you focus from 20 millimeters to 28 millimeters and over 28 millimeters the lens is going to lose the macro capability the barrel of the 24105 extend quite a bit when you zoom in as you can see here but it's going to stay pretty compact if you work between 50 millimeters and 24 millimeters so it is a great lens if you balance uh, the gimbal around 35 millimeters because then you're gonna have a pretty stable system because you're gonna operate just with this uh, little extension of the barrel so that's how i use this lens on the gimbal it's another story with the 2260 because this lens extends quite a lot as well but this lens is lighter than the 24 105 as we can see from 20 to 35 millimeter the barrel doesn't really extend that much but when we extend to 60 millimeter as we can see the barrel extends quite a lot so i always balance this lens on the gimbal setting up at 28 millimeters in this way i have a good range of focal length to operate the gimbal without having uh, to rebalance it uh, on the go both lenses are fully weather sealed they also offer a rubber gasket around the lens mount so you're gonna be pretty safe if you're gonna shoot during uh, rainy days but that's what Panasonic is saying because I already changed the 24105 two times. The first time I had mold on the center element of the lens. The second time I had pretty big dust particles, even if I use this lens probably twice after the first replacement. This third Kobe seems to hold pretty well, but I don't really use them that much. The 2260 should be the same story. I already saw a big dust particle on the rear element of the lens so even if they say that the lenses are weather sealed keep in mind that you should always protect your lenses and don't shoot during rainy days without an umbrella take care of your equipment regarding the weight distribution on the body of the cameras i have to say that the 24 105 balance perfectly fine on the s1 s1h and s1r while on the s5 because the body is a little bit lighter but it has pretty nice grip Anyway, um, the balance is good as well on the S5, but I prefer what I feel using uh, the big bodies from the S1 and S1H uh, lineup. While using the 2260 on the Lumix S1 and S1H, you feel like you're not having a lens attached on the camera because the weight of the body is uh, way bigger than the lens. So with the 2260, you're gonna have a smaller and lightweight system that doesn't really stress your wrist while operating the camera. Now that we have a visual idea of the lenses, let's talk about pricing. The 2260 is going for around 640 euros at this time, uh, if you buy it as a standalone lens. But if you buy it as a kit, you're gonna buy it for 300 euros. On the other side, the 24105 is going for 1100 euros, euros, but if you buy it as a kit, it's gonna cost around 800 euros. So now that we know that we have 500 euros difference between the two lenses, is the 24105 500 euros better than the 2260? In my opinion, yes. I always recommend to get the 24105 f4 if you're working professionally as a photographer or a videographer. If you are a casual shooter, I think that 2260 can do 99% of the job for you. So you don't have to spend a lot of money for a general zoom lens, but if you're working, 
this lens can speed up a lot your uh, process of uh, content creation. Because with this 500 euros difference, you're gonna get the inbuilt stabilization that is gonna help you a lot, both for photos and videos. For example, even if you have the IBIS turned on in your camera, you use a lens that doesn't have stabilization, you have the problem if you shoot at wide angle, let's say from 20 to around 35 millimeters, that you're gonna have the problem of the warping edges in your video. Uh, while with this lens, you're not gonna have that problem. And this is a big plus from this lens. Also, consider that the focal range you're gonna get from this lens is extremely more versatile. First of all, because, I mean, from 60 to 105, you may think that is not a huge difference, but the compression you're gonna get in the background, moving from 60 millimeters to 105, it's a huge difference. So I much prefer to have a more reach on the telephoto side of the lens than the wide side of the lens. Also because in photography you can always make a panorama and then stitch the pictures in post. You're gonna have uh, probably a wider uh, perspective than 20 millimeters. And for video work, like it's really difficult to go wider than 24 millimeters unless you want to have some funky and funny perspective in your videos. But like I wouldn't go wider than 24 millimeters 99% of the time. So this can do pretty much uh, an amazing job for every situation I can be. While with the 20 to 60, I will feel a little bit limited on the long end of the reach of the lens. And don't forget that the 24-105, it's a sharper lens than the 20 to 60. If you stop this 24-105 to f 5.6, you're gonna have uh, extremely sharp pictures corner to corner through the wall of focal length. While with the 20 to 60, if you zoom all the way to 60 millimeters at f5.6, you're not gonna have a great uh, image quality, but we have to stop down that lens at f8 to have uh, good sharpness to the wall frame through the wall range of focal lengths. So this is gonna work extremely well already at f5.6, while the kit lens is gonna work extremely well at f8. So it's an extra stop of light that can make a huge difference in our uh, content creation. Both lenses are suffering from chromatic aberrations, but the 24105 suffers a bit more than the 2260. This can be a problem for the image quality we're gonna capture with our cameras. First, because we're gonna have a poor color rendition, and second, because we risk to have more aliasing than normal, but also we're gonna lose more information. Because, yeah, if you correct those chromatic aberrations, you're gonna lose some uh, pixel information in our uh, 24 megapixel sensor. So we have a sort of the feeling that we're gonna capture less detailed pictures. And another common problem that both lenses have is about the flare resistance. Both lenses are suffering from flares. The 24-105 has a really strong and big purple flare if you film the sun or strong source of light hitting your sensor. And with the 20 to 60, I have to say that the flare is a little bit more gentle and less uh, invasive, but it's still there. So keep in mind if you plan to shoot directly in the sun. I don't know why you will do that, but it's something to consider. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot that the 20 to 60 is pretty wild regarding distortion, while the 24 105 is more corrected and it has way less distortion. So now that we have a good overview about the two lenses, let me explain when I use the 24-105 over the 20-60. I prefer to use the 24-105 for professional jobs, for example, corporate videos, weddings, instructional videos, or if I have to create content fast for the clients. So when I need speed, this is the lens I choose for my workflow. But this is also the only lens I will bring with me for some serious landscape photography trips. Because I consider it's not really advised to swap lenses while you are traveling, because you want to avoid the problem of swapping lenses on the go and risking the problem of having dust and dirt in your sensor. It's totally not convenient in my opinion. Regarding the 20 to 60, I like to use this lens mostly for YouTube, for family vlogs, for casual photography, and if I'm going on a vacation mostly because I don't like to bring with me always heavy setups. So at the end of the day, who should consider the 20 to 60 and what are the advantages of this lens over the 24-105? This lens, it's cheaper, it's lighter, smaller, it has a good center sharpness, and I love the fact that you can go as wide as a 20 millimeter. So this is a great lens for bloggers, YouTubers, and also normal content creator or people that they like to travel. 
bringing a good full frame cameras with them. I don't like the fact that there's a variable aperture through the zoom range. So this lens is going from 3.5 to 5.6. Even if you think that you can close the aperture to f5.6 and use the lens as a zoom lens f5.6, this lens is gonna lose light transmission if you zoom in and out. So it is advised if you plan to use this lens for video work to use it always with a variable ND filter. So you can do minor exposure adjustments with the variable ND filter after you zoom in and out with this lens. A common question I get often on social medias is, uh, should you get both? In my opinion, no, because uh, the focal range is too similar and it's not worth to spend money on both lenses. Unless you have two camera bodies, then it will make sense to have uh, two zoom lenses that are native with the L-mount cameras. In case you already have the 20 to 60, I will probably add just one prime to this kit to stay lightweight and compact. For example, it would be nice to have the 35 mm f1.8 from Panasonic, but they didn't release yet because that lens sits exactly in between the 20 and the 60 focal range. So you're gonna have sort of consistent look if you add that lens in your kit. But if you're serious about landscape photography, I would probably add the 70 to 300 macro lens. In case you already have the 24 105, I wouldn't spend 640 euros to have a 20 millimeter prime. That lens makes sense only if you buy it as a kit lens. So you can probably spend your money in a prime lens just to be safe in low light situations. For example, I always bring with me a 35 millimeter f2 or a 50 millimeter f1.4 in my bag because sometimes I like to shoot in low light or if I want to have a better looking image that only a prime lens can provide. I know you have that question, the Sigma 28 to 70. Sadly, I don't have that lens and I never use it. So I don't really know how it performs on our Lumix S cameras. In the past, I've tried the 24 to 70 f 2.8 from Sigma. That lens was pretty good, but I don't really like the high contrast of Sigma lenses. And uh, for video work, the aperture blades are uh, with steps. So if you plan to film in a shutter priority, you're gonna have uh, the stops of the blades closing and opening, and it's not gonna be seamless like Panasonic Lumix S lenses. So in my opinion, the Sigma lenses are extremely good and have a great value for money for photography, but uh, for video work, maybe they will be not the best choice for you. Anyway, if you have any question, please write down in the comment area below. I'd be really happy to solve your pro problems. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Ciao. There was a delay with the ciao. Ciao.